everyone, we're rounding out episode 134 with the only way we know how. Well, maybe it might not be the only way, but it's the only way we know how to this week. And that's with the midweek wrap-up. What? Are you, are you cosplaying as a gerbil or... What's... Naked mole rat. Naked mole rat. That... With a beard. So not so... Saying... Bearded naked mole rat. Fully clothed like naked mole rat. PG naked mole rat. Just a mole rat. Mole rat. Mole rats. Welcome to Midweek Wrap Up. Welcome Mid to Mole Rats. Welcome to Midweek Mole Rats. <laughs> Welcome to Midweek uh, Mole Rat. Anyway, Very nice. needless to say, there's not a whole lot to talk about on this particular episode. Uh, yes, yeah, especially NXT. It was the NXT uh, live event they had in Australia yeah. where we had the cage match. That they played on NXT two weeks ago. So we already know that Shinsuke retains the championship against Samoa Joe. Yeah, uh, but it's all the matches that happened before that, which were... They were good. They, they were good matches. Yeah. They just, you know, it didn't... It wasn't anything that it was, was story-related. In the same vein as the as the Japan show last week, it was kind of predictable. Yeah. Uh, the opening match I was excited to see. We had the revival take on uh, Riddick Moss and, and Tino Sabatelli. Yeah, not Angelo uh, Dawkins. Yeah, not Angelo. I didn't know who their frick, who that music belonged to, because they've only they were in the Dusty Classic for a second, and then they were gone. That's about it. Um, I still don't really like Tino Sabatelli. He he needs some work, but Riddick Moss is badass. Uh, I liked his bit. Uh, did the whole like. Catching the crossbody on Scott Dawson, he was doing the the following oh, slam a lot. It was really good, but the revival, it's the revival. Yeah, the and boys. They know how to outsmart people. That they they hit Riddick Moss with a motherfucking shatter machine, which was smooth as hell. Shatter machine. The name of that move is the only bad thing about the revival. It really is. It's really the worst part of the team, and it's not. It's starting to grow on me. Yeah, I'm, I'm 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 starting to forget that it's called the mat the shatter machine. The matter machine. The matter machine. The matter horn. Uh, just because like that name isn't going to kill any momentum that the revival has. Yeah. So. Unlike Chronicles of Riddick Moss, and. Is that seriously the name of his venture? I have no idea. I was just talking about the people themselves oh. losing the momentum. Oh. And Tito Santana Cannoli. <laughs> Uh, then we had another tag team match. This one a bit more interesting, as we had Elias Sampson and Bobby Roode. Hey, glorious! Taking on Buddy Murphy and Ty Dillinger. Yeah. Buddy yeah. Murphy and Ty Dillinger immediately over as the uh, Aussie Ten. Uh, they the perfect ten and the Aussie Ten. Yeah. No, they were immediately fan favorites. At um, one point, there was even a both of these tens chant. Yes. Uh, they started chanting once for Bobby Roode when he tried doing the, uh, the ten punch, and, uh, he wasn't putting up with that shit. Nobody liked Elias Sampson. Not even Bobby Roode, really. Uh, Bob, Bobby Roode liked him at the beginning. He, he yeah. get, like, he was trying to, like, tell him to play the guitar or whatever, and then Corey... He should have played the guitar too. He should have learned how to play Bobby Roode's theme song. Probably would have been a, a probably would have been a, a better gesture than just kind of standing there and watching. It would have been the only thing, po I think that's the only thing possible to get Elias Sampson over. Hey, he he doesn't need to get over. He's a heel, though. He I'm talking about, like, just period. Eh. I think, I think, I think that, that it would have been impressive, I'll give him that, but, uh, I don't think he would, he, he what he didn't really care that people wanted to, didn't want to listen to his song he was going to no, play. No, he makes the sound of his own voice. Yeah, so he did it himself. Uh, but neither of them are do it by myself. Neither of them are Australian, but Buddy no. Murphy is. So he had to be on the winning side. He took out Bobby Roode on the outside with a big old dive, and Elias Sampson got hit with a tiebreaker, and Buddy Murphy and Ty Dillinger pick up the win. Both these tens. Yeah. Then we had triple threat ladies action. Amber Moon versus Liv Morgan versus Billy Kay. Uh, hey, another Australian person. Go figure. Billy Kay was uh, not putting up with uh, the the fanfare from her her home country. She didn't really give a damn. Nope. 
Uh, Liv Morgan, people didn't really know quite how to react to her, but Ember Moon was still over AF. Um, this was a good match. Uh, this was probably one of Liv Morgan's strongest matches. Yes. I think she had a really good showing, plus she's in there with Ember Moon and Billy Kay, so that helps it. Um, but uh, we have Liv Morgan attempting to do a superplex on Ember Moon. Uh, Billy Kay breaks it up, hits a big old powerbomb on Liv Morgan. Tries to pin her, she kicks out, and as she's rolling away, Billy Kay stands back up, turns around, and gets hit with the Eclipse by Ember Yeah, Moon. they finally called it by the name that I gave it when it <laughs> first fucking happened. She got hit with the Eclipse, and yeah, Ember Moon... Yeah, the O-Face. That's if Athena does it. Yes. When Ember Moon does it, it's the Eclipse. Ember Moon, picking up another win. Go figure, she's still undefeated. Hey. And then, of course, we have our... NXT Tag Team titles on the line as DIY defends against, you know it, Australia's own TM61. The mighty you don't. 6-1. That's the... The, the, might, the mighty 61. They, actually, uh, it's the Australian dialing. Yeah, uh, Corey, Corey, or it might have been Tom, was saying that it's uh, the mighty from down under. I think that's what they're... Like, that's what... The full name of TM61 is supposed to kind of, kind of represent. Yeah, well, six one. It's the dialing code for Australia. Yeah. <clears throat> um, this was a badass match. I don't know why you needed the too sweet, but um, you know that's always the, the wolf pack and lingerie. <laughs> Sorry for those of you that <laughs> both watching and or listening, you couldn't see what was happening. I had a rubber band wrapped around my Oh my fingers. god. Podcast listeners are really confused. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, th this was this was a, a great tag team match. I'd like to see this in much bigger stakes where we don't really know whether or not DIY is going to keep the titles. Yeah, again, if this would have happened, they would have aired it two weeks ago before airing stuff that happened after the tour and before the, you know, because one of the first NXT shows they had after the tour was over, they had, like, DIY coming out for their championship celebration. Yeah, and then, yeah, we had, uh, yeah, yeah. We had so if that situation. hadn't happened, and if they would have shown it that first, then we would have been in a little bit more anticipation, like, oh, wow, maybe they will give it to TM61 in their hometown. Yeah. Hey, 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 nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah. Do it fucking right. So, guys. Uh, regardless, match was still great. Um, TM61, I, I, they're, I mean, they're guaranteed to go pretty far as far as their, their tag team work is concerned. But it's DIY. It's the tag team titles. Uh, Johnny Gargano hits a knee on Shane Thorne. Nick Miller gets met in the middle. And DIY pick up the win and retain the tag team titles. And then we already told you that... They made a, then Corey Graves made a... Reference to their uh, original team name. Really? Talking about because when he go drops to his oh, knees yeah. in the movies, it's the mighty don't kneel. Like a, that's probably why. Yeah. Which which was a, a clever a clever play on TMDK. That. Um, and then we had, then we had a good show of respect between both teams. Yeah, because DIY was like leaving, and they came back out to shake the hands and uh, raise the hands. Tum six one, Tum six one, and then we told you Shinsuke wins. So let's Winsuke move on. Wins Shins. Yes, let's move on to Lucha Underground. We had a very strange episode of Lucha Underground. Um, yeah. Started off with uh, uh, Mil Mortes really wants to get back at Puma for what happened last week in his match against Jeremiah Crane, and then afterwards with the uh, with the kendo stick and all that all that fun stuff. Um, and Katrina tells him that he has to go through Vampiro if Vampiro, he wants to get... Vampiro, if, Vampiro, 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 Vampiro. What was the name again? Vampiro. Gotcha. Uh, if he wants to get a Prince Puma. And then we also had uh, Katrina walk through, the, uh, walk through the hallway and meet up with Jeremiah Crane, who said, Did you see me last week? I beat Mil Mortis. I beat the man you love. And she says, He's not the one I love. And then... Then he looked really distraught. Yeah, like... I don't know 
what that's supposed to mean, like... She's still banging with Phoenix. Possibly, like, I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if it meant like, oh Just yeah, it, man. I want to get with you, or if I want to get with Phoenix. She's licked the entire roster. I don't know who it is anymore. Spoiler anyway. alert, it's Matt Stryker. Lucky, I want to be Matt Stryker so bad, if that's true. Joey Ryan. I kind of want to be Joey Ryan. You do want to be whoever it is. I, anybody. I don't give a damn. You want to be... You would... You Would Would you... Okay. Would you... <laughs> would you rather... <laughs> get your ass kicked by Bill Morte so that you got licked by Katrina. Yes. I would I would gladly take... Well, How much of an ass woman am I taking? I'm saying... Am I going to be conscious and know that it's going to happen? I, I'm just saying you're jobbing to him on an episode of Lucha Underground. As uh, you know, what he can he can hit me with a spear. He can hit me with a flatliner. That's cool. I'll I'll stay down. Ain't gotta do much more than that. As long as I'm getting a lick by Katrina, I'm cool with it. Um, Not even asking for a PO. Damn. Nope. Uh, yeah. So our first match is uh, a grudge match because Sexy Star jumps to conclusions. Uh, Sexy Star demanded this match last week from Dario Cueto. Uh, against Mariposa. Yes. And Mariposa is like, I don't know why you keep thinking this is me, but okay, I'll have to whoop your ass. Instead, like, Sexy Star beats the shit out of Mariposa in this match. Yeah, the beginning of it looks like a fucking MMA fight, because they just get down on the ground and start <laughs> punching each other. Yeah. No, and, and it, it's, I mean, it's a lot of that. There's, there's a little shit in there every now and again, but it's very... It's a very physical match. Mariposa ends up like stopping a wheelbarrow on the outside and slams Sexy Star into the commentator table like 12 times. And Sexy is just like all fucked up after that. It's just, it's a bad, it's a bad situation for both of them. Mariposa ended up trying to go for the butterfly effect. Didn't uh, Sexy Star got out and then everything went downhill from there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just, it was, it was a bad situation. Uh, yeah, she, like, Mariposa tries to go for a superplex. Uh, Sexy fights her off, knocks her down, hits a double stomp. Sexy picks up the win and like immediately walks away because apparently there was something up with her shoulder or maybe she just wanted to get the hell out of there. I don't know what it was. But then Marty the Moth shows up. Is it afraid another spider was going to show up? Possibly. Uh, Marty the Moth shows up, check on his sister. Uh, you know, he checks on her, gives her a hug and everything, and then he choke slams her. And then flaps. Don't know why. I don't know what this means for uh, for the moth tribe <laughs> or whatever. It's Make probably the insect Nick. tribe at this Nick. point. Make Jason Statham tribe. I thought that was the white rabbit. No, apparently they are the Lucha Midget tribe. <laughs> <laughs> and we're segueing into that. Yep, because that's, that's our next one. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Mascari the Sagrada is the white rabbit because. All three members of the Rabbit Tribe all came up and bowed to him. And no matter how many times he said, no, 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 they kept insisting that he was the White Rabbit and he was the reason that they were at the temple. <laughs> and then They should have put bunny ears on him. And then he called all three of them crazy and he walked away and they all went, isn't he amazing? <laughs> it's like last week we had the Johnny Mundo fanboy and these were the Muscarina Sagrada fanboys. Boy. Fan. I see what you did there. Uh, and then we, yeah. then we segue into a match where the Rabbit Tribe is taking on the entirety of the Reptile Tribe. Uh, it was, I originally thought it was supposed to be Cobra Moon, but she had Drago on a chain and yeah. had Drago take her spot in the match. Yeah, well, I mean, it was even announced as Cobra Moon. Yeah. So, uh, so she forced Drago to take her spot. Uh, Which apparently that's allowed. Boy, this was this was a weird one. There was some cool stuff in this match. I gotta say, uh, Mala Suerta and Pindar had some had some great moments. Uh, Vibora is just crazy Big. strong Big. and just you know it looks like a monster. They're seven feet tall. Yeah, what was he six seven? He's like six five, six six. He's, he's close. Um, and then uh, what's what's the uh, the checker guy? Saltador. 
Yeah, Saltador. Yeah. Uh, he's just weird, man. Vindar, Vibradora, Vibora. 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 Uh, yeah, it's, it was like a comedy team versus three guys who take, take themselves too seriously. Well, despite yeah, the like, fact that they were ridiculous looking masks. Like, there, there was some they, good shit in there, and then it was just a lot of ridiculous shit. Pindar and then Vibora's mask. They look like Doctor Who villains. A little bit. Or uh, Power Ranger villains. Fucking Paul London selling that boot from Vibora. That like, was... That might have been my favorite part of the whole <laughs> takes, match. Takes the big bump, sits back down, and then he like, throws himself back down again, like, selling the boot twice. It was ridiculous. So um, that's how hard you get hit. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. So... <coughs> Reptile Tribe ends up picking up the win after Drago is tagged in, told to finish it off. He ends up hitting that uh, that flipping neckbreaker DDT <laughs> thing to uh, to Salvador, defeats him, and then we had Phoenix and Aerostar actually save Drago from the Reptile Tribe. Yeah, uh, took out both the guys. That, like and initially, Drago was really freaked out and didn't quite know what was going on. Uh, but they got they got the chain off of him. They got everybody away from him, and it kind of seems like Drago's like back in the right, you know, right state of mind. Um, this is something I talked about a couple weeks ago when he was initially abducted. Is that's going to make it really strange to defend the trios championships if Drago is gone? Yeah. So now there's a good chance that Drago's probably working. For the reptile tribe is probably un- under some sort of like mind control, and it'll probably be the reason that the super friends lose the titles. Yeah. But we won't know that until that comes to fruition. Uh, we had Mac and Sexy Star just kind of talk real quick. Um, uh, Sexy was kind of you know giving him you know good luck on your match later tonight. You know it was the very it was the same thing as Sexy Star's match with Johnny Mundo. Yeah. Where he's like, yeah, I also don't need your help. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're they're the they're the wholesome good guys. They're they're gonna, yeah, they're he's gonna like, by themselves. By myself, I'm gonna put that belt on my smooth belly. He's not freight train. You sure? Positive. Well, I thought I saw him on that five dollar wrestling. Nope. Place. Nope. That was freight train. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> freight train on the map. Not the same guy. Two different people. Yeah. Two different people. Uh, Are you sure? Yes, we had the Mac There's getting Swan ready for his different people. Damn. Uh, the Mac was getting ready for his match, and then Dario Cueto let him know that it wasn't for the championship uh, on this particular episode. This was actually for the winner to decide what the stipulation for the championship match would be. Uh, cool. And. Mac said, "Well, you know what? Are you a betting man? Because if you are, you should always bet on Mac." didn't say anything else because that would be wrong. And then the Mac went out <laughs> for his championship stipulation picking match against Johnny Mundo. Uh, which And I was a little bit surprised that Johnny Mundo won. Yeah. To be completely honest. I'm The way these stories usually play out is the face wins, picks the stipulation, and then the heel still manages a way to win in the stipulation that the heel picks. Or well, I think I think with the fact that Mundo has cheated in both situations, it, like in, in all like both of his title matches so far, he's cheated yeah. to win. I think this might be a quick end to Johnny Mundo's title reign. He might actually. He might actually have, you know, backed himself into a corner, um, because I think, you know, especially with the with the way this match went, it was, you know, it was a pretty even matchup until you know it hits that point where uh, the Worldwide Underground has to come out. Yeah. And then the number the numbers game happens. The distraction causes, uh, you know, Johnny Mundo is able to hit a low blow, roll up the Mac. Uh, and and then there you go. So now Johnny gets to pick the stipulation. He ends up picking an Iron Man match or all night long. And I think that's like he might have the numbers advantage, but I think that just gives 
I think that gives more time for the Mac to either accept that he needs help or or it gives more time for the Mac to find out a way to like eliminate Jack Evans and PJ Black. PJ Black. PJ Black. Because, I mean, they, they don't have Taya. Unless Taya is going to make a return for this one, which I don't think. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how far into her recovery of her ankle she is at this point. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's it's hard to tell what... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like... I feel like the, the fact that... I feel that like the Mac could be taking the belt. I think so. I, I think, you know, he's... He's been a he's been a pretty pretty much mainstay since the start of season one, and I think Johnny, with how unlucky he was in getting the championship initially, I think there's a chance that he feels like he's so in control, and he's going to lose that control very quickly. Mm. But there also was the Johnny Mundo fanboy last week, yes. and I've seen screenshots of a new member of the Worldwide Underground. So, we could possibly see that, like, Worldwide Underground is banned from ringside, and that new guy shows up, or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to see Mac as champion. That would be cool. Because, I mean, he's, he's done a lot of shit since season one, and I think, I think he deserves it. Yeah. But, we won't know. I, we don't know for sure if the match is happening next week. Uh, I feel like it was supposed to be advertised for next week, but uh, we noticed when we were watching it that it seemed like they cut away from Melissa Santos really fast. Yeah, when she was announcing when it was supposed to be. Yeah, like the winner picks the stipulation for their match. Now. Yeah, so they'll probably do something else in between, so we might get it in two weeks. This was episode 18, I think, yeah. so we're getting pretty close to the finale now. Uh, so... Ultima Lucha should be around the corner. Uh, we we still do have to divvy out all of the uh, the medallions again. Now yes. that the gift of the gods has been cashed in, so we might get that all next week and the week after, and then maybe we'll get the championship match just before Ultima Lucha, and then they'll have their rematch at Ultima Lucha. I'm not sure, but uh, so we'll find out next week, really. Uh, or you can follow them on Facebook, uh, and they usually. Put up little uh, little screenshots of something that's gonna happen this week, so gets you a little little hyped for Lucha Underground. But for now, that's it for the midweek wrap up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click all of our social media links down there. You can follow us on all of them. Uh, you can also check out our SoundCloud link where you can listen to this review along with any news, raw review, and Tuesday Night Live in podcast form. But you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel because you get top fives pay-per-view predictions, and pay-per-view reviews, and other special videos every now and again, only in video form. Yeah, you don't get them on the podcast. You also don't get podcast versions of the stuff over on Reasonable Wrestling Fans. That's Reasonable with a W. Like wrestling. Thank you. Uh, where you get unboxing videos when we have them. Uh, we'll, be getting, we'll be doing our, uh, our pay-per-view punishment videos up pretty soon once weather and sickness permit. Uh, we'll be putting up more videos throughout the Nobody course of the year. Nobody wants to chop his sick ass. Yeah, I don't want to get people sick. Because if they chop me, I'll cough on them. And then it's, Especially it's, in the ass. That's weird. Don't chop somebody in the ass, it's weird. Oh, um, a knife head spanking. <laughs> <laughs> Check out all of the extra videos over there. We'll be putting up some new ones throughout the year. Uh, get some more series up there on a regular basis. But for now, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you at whatever video. You decide to watch next. The knife edge spanking video. No. No. Are you going to slingshot Bret Hart? <laughs> Johnny Moon, though. <laughs>